it's different today. There's no, there's no coffee here, you know, so I don't know what to call it, just chatting with Chris or that kind of thing, but we appreciate letting us be in here in the uh, practice complex for this last one of the regular season. Right, so the ice basketball training facility, yeah. um, obviously this is where our guys are at every day usually. Um, we practice a lot here. Right. This is kind of their home away from home. They can get in here with their code. So it's a terrific tool for recruiting and a terrific tool for our players. We'll, uh, we're going to get into some questions at the end of this, you know, from the members of the website at K-State Online because um, they've really appreciated, you know, you doing this for not, not just for us, but for them so they could see this all year. And so we'll throw some at you at the end from there if that's OK. But before we start with that, just want to look back at the, you know, the end of the regular season. You guys beat Baylor 77-67 on on Saturday in Bramlage to you know lock up fourth place in the league, a ten and eight record. Uh, I guess about, I'm curious your thoughts on that game in general, and then now that the regular season's over, how proud you are of the team for what they did in the Big 12 specifically? Well, you know, just in that game, we were we were a little disappointed how we finished TCU. Right. We know we left a game on the table to possibly move up to third. Uh, if we get that one, then get Baylor coming home. So that one stung, and we really made them watch it and really made right. them focus on the turnovers that, 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 that we didn't execute the right way to finish the game. Uh, we missed some assignments. We didn't move the ball enough. And then it all came back to Baylor, and we did, we did everything that we needed to do. We defended the right way. Right. We had a bunch of assists. You know, Barry had nine, X had six. You know, and Dean was really going offensively. So um, being able to adapt and, and be resilient is something that is a characteristic of this team. But uh, moving forward, you know, when you're one and done, you don't get the time, chance to be resilient. You have to win to advance, and that's the, the mindset that you have to have. Uh, you talked about the, the finish of that TCU game. We asked in there the players, Barry and Dean, about it. And you could tell that Barry in particular wasn't, of course, real happy with how that finished. Do you get the sense they're pretty excited to have another shot at those guys just a week after that game? Well, I think for us, we, you know, knowing what we know when yeah. seeing what we saw when we watched film, yeah, definitely you'd like to have the opportunity. And their RPI is very high. Right. You know, I think they're second behind. Uh, Kansas yep. is, is as low as it is. So, you know, anytime you get a chance to play another high RPI team, it's in your league, uh, on a neutral site, it's a good thing. Right. You know, you, you've said in a very respectful, like politically, you know, polite way that you were disappointed at times this year that you guys were picked eighth. Um, you knew you guys had a better team than that. Now that it's over um, and you guys finished fourth in the league and, like you said, had a chance at finishing third, do you feel like you guys overachieved or was it what you expected they could do all along? I think the biggest thing is that when, when you have guys coming back from a successful team, right then it's not going to be different. You know what I mean? That, the experience alone, and we've been saying all along, we have good young players and we don't have any seniors, but we have Dean Barry, Cam, and X, and Cardi showed up. And, you know, now uh, Mac is in that group of, of, of starters. But, you know, there were certain instances where we had other guys really help us win games, whether it was, you know, whether it was Ahmad or it was Levi or James came in and gave, gave us a great spark down the stretch. And Cardi going through what his evolution as, a, as being a bench player to a starter and right. then Cam going back to being a bench player. So, you know, all those things kind of made us stronger in the end. We didn't know we were going to have injuries. We didn't know we were going to be without Cam for a long time. Uh, the, the, the unforeseen future with that team, you just couldn't tell. Right. But one thing we did know is they were competitive, and we did know we had great leadership with Barry. And we did know that Dean was a really, really talented offensive weapon. And uh, those are the things that we knew. Um, and it didn't matter if anybody else knew. They were going to really do a good job of showing it. There's a lot to talk about, of course, and you should be focused on this year and this week in Kansas City, but I can't help but not ask. Uh, there's, of course, possible NBA futures for players down the line, whether it's this year or next year, but on paper, the whole team would come back next year. You talk about how valuable experience is and how much they've jumped from one year to the next year. Getting way ahead of ourselves, how good could the group be next year if they all came back? They could be a really good group. Um, I mean, when you go through stuff together, um, it, it helps build that type of uh, camaraderie that that only comes when you stay with somebody for a long right. time and uh, you know Cam yesterday joked about you guys are gonna cry when me and Dean Barry leave and we were like no we're not and they were like no you guys are gonna cry when we leave and honestly those guys built this thing back the right way and it started with them you know and it was it was very clear we're gonna start this thing with young young guys and and build through them and there's gonna be some growing pains and 
you know, by their sophomore year, we're in the tournament. By their junior year, we're, we're on the verge of doing something special again. And, uh, you know, that's what you want when you, when you have a recruiting class and you start with them and you check the progression. And in each year, they're getting better. And, I, and that's going to be the same thing with those guys because they work so hard to get better. I'm curious in your, your opinion on something. I, I'm a, I, I think I'm unique in that I, I, I put a lot of value in conference tournaments. You know, I, I think you win championships in tournaments, not, you know, in the regular season. I know that's not how college basketball is for some people, but how much importance do you guys place on the Big 12 tournament and a chance to go there and win that and, and, you know, and say that over those three days you were the best team, you know, in the league? How we put it to our guys is that K-State's never won the Big 12 right. tournament. So um, obviously there's a carrot there that, that's something you haven't done. Uh, something we haven't done and something school hasn't done. So obviously to get them to focus on a new tournament before the big tournament is something that's good and it gives them uh, a chance to feel a little nervousness, a little you know, a little, little bit of confidence because you know we have some all-conference guys right. and now you're going to go out and show the same people that you just went to war with on a you know three or four day period who's the mano a mano it's like the Royal Rumble you know you get to there you, you get to fight it out and see who's the best after three or four days. I appreciate the Royal Rumble reference personally very much so I'm going to run through some of these questions like uh, we talked a little before we came on that we asked some people on our site to, to serve some questions to you we tried to give them some ground rules of stuff not to ask about you know and if I ask anything that just isn't good you just tell me to pass and we'll, we'll move on but I think some of it's funny and some of it's more serious the first one I, I thought was funny so I will ask it have you ever had to tell Bruce to calm down or sit down in a game before? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, sometimes every game just about, but you know, he's a fiery guy. We know he's going to yell. We know he's going to be up. We know he won't sit down, um, but that's who he is. And you know, you got to let your head coach coach the way he coaches. Um, you know, some people say, well, you should get more technicals. Why? Right. Because the, the one thing that it, and what we found when he does get a technical, we don't play very well the rest of the way. So, you know, you just got to you just got to let him do his deal. And as 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 you know, when you're assistant coach on the bench, you got to monitor a lot of stuff. And when you're up going crazy as a head coach, you don't really know fouls. You don't really know yep. if it's one and one, how many timeouts we got. So those are things that we got to convey to him, you know, when he's up and he's, and he's in a rant and he's, <laughs> and he's just competing with the other coach I thought this isn't on here but I thought he had a chance to get one last Saturday when they had called a foul on the far end from us the far end for you guys too on Levi under the hoop when I, I was ready for him to get one um, another user here asks how much do you guys pay attention to the bubble talk who's in who's out and what do you think about where people project you guys in the tournament you know we everybody's excited about this time of year it's yeah. it's a it's the best sports time of the year with where you you, you you got a chance to love teams you've never seen before. You got a chance to root for Cinderella. You got a chance to root for Blue Buds or hate the Blue Bloods or hate the teams that are always good. And and those are the things that that make it a special time of the year. And uh, you know we know where we are. You know, but when you look at certain things and you say, okay, how can you sweep some teams and they finish behind you? and they'd be ahead of you in some of the tournament stuff. But some of it is you got to be lucky. Some of it is you play the teams you, you bought yep. in the non-conference. If they have decent seasons, your RPI will RPI be okay. If they have horrible seasons, then they'll bring you down. But the key to this time of the year, a lot of those guys are going to be done playing, so their RPI doesn't matter anymore. It's going to want to be the higher-end teams playing by the end, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so you get some wins and they get some wins in these higher leagues now it, it really helps you get a late surge in the rpi right makes perfect sense uh this user also asks what your favorite place to eat in manhattan is mm. i feel like i should have been for that one that's tough. probably that's bourbon and baker yeah bourbon and baker is a nice spot to sip on stuff and yep. my wife likes she really likes ambiance and we like to hang out there um if if one player on this basketball team had to go play football at K-State, who would you suggest, who would you nominate for that? Who'd be the best football player on this team? Probably Xavier Schneed, because he was a... I think he was a, yeah. He was a football recruit, you know, he was a big wide receiver, he can run. Barry thinks he could be a DB, he always <laughs> brings it up. And, and we say, Barry, you gotta hit people. And he was like, well, I'll be like Dion. Like, well, we know Barry's not that fast to be like Dion, a lockdown guy. But Barry says he would have been a great player for K-State. 
<laughs> I believe that he I believe that he believes that at least. Um, what's the next step for mention a couple different players here? Um, some newer guys. So I won't ask all of them, but I'll, I'll do the first couple. Next step that you want to see from a guy like Levi Stockard and, and James Love. Like, what do you want to see from them as they progress into next year? Speak. <laughs> <laughs> he just walks past. But he probably could have. He's a football guy, too. He played football, too. But uh, the next step is a level of consistency on the floor and knowing what you're supposed to do. Um, when we have certain guys on there, they just flow and they don't talk all the time, which is not a good thing. But it is a good thing that they can react to what each other are doing. The younger guys need to learn how to talk and, and really focus on, on being prepared to compete. And I think people don't understand. They're like, what do you mean? Like sometimes as a younger guy, you come in there and you think I'm playing hard and you're really not playing as hard as you need to. Uh, but you're, because you're going against a veteran guy who understands the shortcuts, the, the little tricks, the little things that, that help them get by. You can't do that as a freshman. You got to learn the hard way, the right way, the all the time way. And I think those two guys, uh, once they learn that, they're go they'll be much better contributors for us. This next one's interesting. It may be something that you don't have a big opinion on either way, but uh, a person's curious if, if you guys have any interest in pushing for recent K-State players, you know, Michael Beasley, Jacob Pohl, and those kind of guys right before you guys came in getting their jerseys hung, and if that would affect, you know, recruiting to see recent Wildcats like that have their jerseys hung. Is that something you guys talk about or have any in Absolutely. input on? Since we, since we got in here, you know, if you go up in our office, those guys are all in our office and, our, and you know, all are on the walls. Um, definitely, obviously, you got to do Jacob. You right. know, you just have to. He's, he means that much to this era of Kansas State basketball and Mike Beasley. Um, and, and we've pushed for it. And it's, it's one of those deals where they want those guys to be retired. And sometimes you just got to do stuff because it's right. You know, you yep. can't worry about... Um, when's the right time. The right time is now for certain guys. And I always look at what Rodney did in his career here. I mean, it's pretty good too. But, you know, those guys need to be in the rafters because not only, I mean, they, they represented a, a very uh, great time in K-State K K basketball, which this era recognizes. Right. Another guy asks, and I think this is this is good too, with, with strength and conditioning. Obviously, you guys have a great strength and conditioning coach. Is it something where... Do you guys have things you, you tell him, hey, we'd love so-and-so to get better at this, this, and this, or is, it, or is it vice versa? Is he kind of the one giving you guys ideas on what people need to work on? I think when we look at certain guys and we want them to develop some explosion, we'll say, hey, we, we need his, his, this guy to get his, you know, his motor and his explosion and be able to turn his hips a little quicker and right. uh, change direction. I think those are the things that we can say, but he, he's on an individual need to get better. Uh, program with those guys. He doesn't just put out things and say, hey, everybody's on one weight. We're just going right. to plug it out. Now, it's, it's different stuff. So obviously, you know, with our guys, we're going to really weight train after the season and get, get our bodies big and strong. And, um, you know, that's a huge part of why we're better. And those guys are juniors. You know, they're strong. Yep. They're, they're lean. They're where they need to be physically. So, you know, we're, we're extremely proud of it and, and, and thankful for Ben, you know, being here and what he's done with the transformation of our guys. A funny note on that, just random people might laugh at this, but sometimes before a game has started, it's hard for us to find a picture to put on the site to represent the game. So I'll go try to cheat and find an old picture of a guy that looks like it's the right one, and I can't do it with him because Barry Brown looks so different now. They, Dean Wade looks so different, I can't, I can't do it. So he's obviously doing, doing good work there. I remember the first time we talked, we were standing right over there, and I asked you about Dean Wade, and you talked about how he was different in practice and how he was aggressive and how he believed in himself. The reason I, I build that up is this question asks you, is, is there a specific point in the year where you realized that Dean had clicked and turned a corner? Is there any game that stands out, or was it before the year started? Uh, it was the summer. I mean, it was the work you put in when nobody's in the gym. That's when you can tell, and you can tell um, in an open gym in, in the summertime and the preparation and in fall and in practice, and he was unguardable, and, you know, right. It was in everywhere, you know, so we just knew that it was his turn. And, you know, when you develop a guy, it doesn't always happen as fast as maybe you want it or the fans want it. But when it does happen, it's a special thing. And um, for him to be first team as a junior, I mean, you look and I was, you know, somebody said how many first team all conference guys. Jacob was first team as a junior, too. Right. But he was still a good player when he's a freshman and sophomore. But now you jump on that first team. Now it's a whole different deal. There's NBA guys on that first team and really special players. Even this year, what is it? Senior, 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 
because like Graham, Carter, Evans, so three seniors, obviously Trey Young. So it's, yeah. it's hard to get on that team, obviously, right, before absolutely. before your last year. Um, this one I, I just makes me smile. And I've been guilty of this, too. So you sit at home and you watch a game and you yell at a big guy, like, why don't why don't you dunk that? Is that something that you guys get mad about, too, and like and try to teach them to be more aggressive? Or is it, is it something that fans overplay uh, when the big guys are open around the hoop and not, not, not dunking it? We don't say it that nice. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's a definitely something that we have to get better at. And when you lose DJ, who dunked or finished every, he's an all-time field goal right. percentage leader in school history. Right. You know, he, we, whenever he caught it down there, we just was like, that light's going to change on the scoreboard because yeah. he's – that's a bucket down there, and he's going to dunk you or left hand flick that thing in there. So you know we, but it was a process. He wasn't that way when he came here, and you know it, James and, and 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 Levi are not that way right now all the time. But they're going to get there right. through through practice and maturity and experience. This is uh, could be tricky because so much is going to happen between now and next season. But you look at a guy like Sean Williams. Um, Projecting out, I guess, how could he fit in with this group and what can he provide that maybe would be unique or helpful? Well, he's super athletic, you know, and that, you know, we want to play with athletic guards with size um, and he can really pass. So yeah. those are the things that when you can get another big athletic guard that really helps um, continue to do what we want to do. And that's continue to be pressure on the ball, continue to generate turnovers, uh, continue to play in transition offensively. We talked about this in one game. I think it was way back after the Tulsa game. But um, you've got, of course, you have to have a shooter shoot mentality for a team like this. Um, but how the question is, how tricky is it to decide when to tell a shooter to stop? Um, and when do you when do you know when that when that is, if ever? Sometimes <laughs> they don't know. Like Barry, we were watching the game at my house last night and Barry was talking about oh yeah I, I knew I shot one of the very next yeah. play he goes I don't remember shooting that like we were like yes you did <laughs> you, you remember shooting that stop it <laughs> but you know sometimes guys get in zones where they don't really they zone out and they just they just shoot it you know and we try to teach when you don't know what to do don't shoot the ball like that's the worst thing you do you kind of floating around and then you just pop up and shoot it and I can think know. of a guy who does that so yeah <laughs> So, but you know what I mean? Those are the things that you got to just teach them. And you know, coach is, is great about not handcuffing kids and right. not scaring them into not making plays. And like sometimes um, a guy's got to make a play. You got to make the play. And if you're looking at the bench or you're nervous, and you're never going to make that play and, and overcome that, that level of fear of taking big shots. I know, and this poster does too. They know the whole team's competitive, but he asks, is there any one guy on the team who comes to mind when you say who wants to win the most or hates or hates losing the most? Oh, it's Barry. I mean, I think that's pretty clear right. how he acts and how he is. And um, he he thought the ref needed to look at the scoreboard and see he didn't foul like it was going to make that ref say, "Oh, no, you're right, Barry. I looked up there and saw that was a bad call. Take that foul <laughs> off." Yeah. You know, Barry, that's just how he is. He's extremely competitive. He wants to win. He cheats to win. He does everything possible. Uh, to get a victory. Um, a little off topic, but I think it's a really good question here. He just asks, how awesome is it working with young people while being an integral part of their personal growth and development? Um, and so how, just, that's your life, that's your job. Like how amazing is it that you get to do that on a, da on a daily basis? Well, the, the amazing thing about it, and it's amazing and it's also, you gotta look at it two way. We're, we're parents too. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we're nurturing other people's kids more than our own. Right. And you know, by the time they get older and are able to really do what you ask them to do, uh, it becomes less the nurture coach. It's more of a relationship and a bond at the end, at the end of their careers. Just like I said, camp saying we're going to cry right. when those guys are on senior night. You know, th that type of stuff, it mean, it's meaningful because you come in one way and you've had bad times and as freshmen, they all want to transfer. I'm mad, you know, and then as sophomores, all right, I'm good. And then at juniors, I should have left. Then at seniors, <laughs> I'm glad I stayed yeah. here. You know, that's that's generally every sport. Like, guys, people get that because you're going to be in a, in a – if you're a good player, you're going to be the GOAT sometimes where you're like, he was awful that day. Right. And we tell our guys, don't, don't type your name in on Twitter on a bad game if you don't want to – you're not a big boy. <laughs> right. You know, and that, because that's what they do. They type it in when they play well, type it in when they don't play well. And there's a different – 
it was a different deal on, on winning and losing. Um, and the same question he asks, how rewarding is there, or what is it like when former players come back, either to watch practice or work with the team? Like, how cool is that to get to have the chance to do, to do that? I mean, it's awesome. Like, this summer, we had a great time. Um, you know, we had <laughs> Gip, Nino, Shane, Jacob, Kirk Kelly, J.O., Martavius, Rodney. We, and we didn't recruit all those guys. Right. You know, Wes was back too. So we, we had a great group of, of K-Staters, and that's what it's about. It's, it doesn't matter what era. It matters that you love purple and white, and that's the good thing about it. And Coach does a great job with his outreach to other guys and, and, and wanting them to be around our guys. And, and honestly, Kirk Kelly being here helped Dean. Yeah because he pushed him a lot this summer to, to go at him. You know, when Kurt first got here, Dean wouldn't go at him. He wouldn't, and then he, a lot of choice remarks throughout a three or four week period, and Dean just, boom, he started going at him and going and playing harder. And when you have him and J.O. As, as a front line on another team, and DJ here too, and Gip, and these guys are all on other teams, you know, you got to play hard because they're pros and they're big and they're strong and they play hard. And, and it's, it's rewarding because to see all those guys sitting on the floor after they're done playing, just talking hoops, talking life, right. talking about what you don't make mistakes I did. This is what you guys got to do to make it. That's priceless for our young guys. Uh, this is from a few different users, and I don't want to pawn it off on them because I'd probably ask the same thing. Um, a lot of questions about the lavender uniforms, and if you know if you're allowed to wear them in the tournament, or if there's anything you can say about that, or or where the NCAA gives you gives you the go ahead on that kind of thing. I have no idea. We had to do a waiver, a quick waiver, to obviously get it done. Right. Um, Obviously, they're called the Lucky Lavenders all of a sudden now. So um, Never lose. our guys love that uniform. We love them. The throwback. I mean, you just nostalgic stuff is cool, you know, and it, it, it's, it's cool to, to the new generation. But, you know, it's cool to the old generation who who, who saw Orlando Black and make that shot in that uniform. Yep. And that brings back great memories, too. So, um I mean, we're going to continue to play in those, you know, whenever we can, because it, they're, they're, it's, a, it's cool. And the kids love the Lavender Kobe's, too. Yeah, I, I think it's been interesting to see that. For me, this is it from here, but to notice how many times they still wear those when they're not wearing the Lavenders. Obviously, they love, they love those for sure. This guy compliments you talking about he doesn't think he's ever seen a K-State basketball team run as many backdoor cuts and backdoor alley-oop alley blobs, dunks, that kind of stuff. He's curious, how much practice do those plays kind of t take? And then do you also feel comfortable adding more in each year as guys develop, like, you know, that junior class you've been talking about? Well, you got to have dudes that can pass. And, those, and, we, and if you notice, only certain guys we let pass the ball. <laughs> on those plays and obviously Xavier is a great lob catcher and Dean is a great lob catcher and backdoor um, and it's timing it is not it's a hard pass to play pass the throw because you're getting guarded too uh, so those those are high risk high reward right um, you know a lot of them after timeouts or start a game just to try to change momentum. And Coach is an at-risk guy. Like, he'll we'll be like, no, don't run that right now. I'm running it. And we're just like, and just like, eh. and then we get, when Xavier dunks it, and then everybody goes crazy, and then we get on a run. So, you know, he, he's not afraid to pull some shenanigans out of his pocket and then throw a lob. I'm curious, this may be something that you don't have a lot of input on, but it's still an interesting question. He asked about games like, Tulsa being played in Wichita and Vandy being played in the Sprint Center and stuff like that. I guess uh, when you guys go to their gym sometimes and play, do you guys intentionally like to play those games in, in Wichita or Kansas City to get exposure there, or would you rather have them in Bramlage? Well, part of our deal is that we know we got Western K Stater fans, so we do the Wichita deal. It's in right. a bigger venue. Then we do the Kansas City. We just alternate them years. But that's basically how we, we, we do the Wichita and the, and the KC games. We just alternate every other year at each spot. Um, a lot of people don't want to come to Manhattan, right. so they would rather play you in a neutral and then play at their place. And we like it because it gives you a true road game. And right. we've, been, we've been really actually successful going back and playing people in their own gyms. Uh, so it's one of those deals where it's a high risk on the back end because you're actually not playing in another neutral site in their state right. or near them. Uh, um, uh, through with that, I appreciate you taking the time to answer them. Just for me, I guess a couple more and then we'll wrap it up would be uh, uh, 
you guys, of course, finished 10 and 8. Some ups and downs probably as far as maybe support from the fan base at times. But I want to give you a chance to talk about there were a lot of fans who did come out every single game and support you guys, and a lot of students did every single game. And I guess just how much they meant to you and, and the players in a year that um, there wasn't always great positive vibes coming from outside the program, but there were a lot of people, probably the majority, you know, who did feel good about what you guys did uh, this year and supported you guys. I think, you know, when when you're when you're going through stuff, you don't really pay attention, but you do. Right. They when you when you're a hooper and you love hooping, it don't matter who's there or not. But as you progress and you're having a pretty good season, yeah. you want you want some attaboys too. You want some pats on the backs and 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 for people not to show up for some of the stuff Barry and Dean did yep. this year is and this is high end stuff. You know, this is first second team all stuff. You know, Barry getting 38 and then Dean's some of his stuff he's done in that gym and. Uh, even Cardi, that stuff is impressive. There's not a senior on that team. And, I, you know, I think our guys are thankful that you guys were willing to do this. And this, this is not about friendship. This is about me talking to our fans about what it really is. Right. And, you know, we I've been extremely honest when we lose, extremely honest when we win. There's right. no difference. It's and, and I think our fan base needs to hear what's real and not an opinion. Yep. I'm in this with them every day, so it's not an opinion because I'm giving you information within our family to share with other people to make sure that they understand it's okay to support yep. these guys. So that's the biggest thing uh, with our guys. And to see the lines for our guys the, on senior day for Dean and those guys signing autographs, it took forever for them to get out. That's the way it's supposed to be. And it's the way it should have been. Right. But when you when you allow yourselves to, to, to listen to one voice say a certain thing, then, then that's the way it's going to be right. perception-wise. When it wasn't really that way. And you can complain about our schedule all you want. If if those bad teams would have would have played well and our RPI is high, we wouldn't even be talking about Correct. where we are. So we got to get over it. We're, we're over that side of the bad schedule, whatever. It's not even worth talking about. Let's talk about we got to win moving forward. Yep. And let's talk about these guys soldiering through, finishing fourth. Um, let's talk about Barry Brown saying, if you're not riding with my coach, I'm not riding with you. Right. That's what it's really about. You want your kids to rally around K-State, but you also want them to rally around the people that brought them here, with them every day, that are pushing them to be the best they can possibly be. And if you look at those two, we've pushed Dean and Barry extremely hard to, to, to reach you know, the heights that they did, and Cam as well, those three juniors. We really have coach the shit out of them, yep. excuse me, yep. but we really Planners. we really have done that. And you can see in their development why they're upper tier players in our league now. Yeah. I mean, on that note, I just, I want to say thanks because um, you didn't have to do this with us all year. Uh, it, I know it took time. I can't think of how many times that you had to leave, you know, leave a practice and then come to talk to us and then go back to a training table or practice. And so we appreciate it. Um, you know, you, you maybe not see the stuff on the boards or on Twitter, but I don't know how many people have come out and said, I didn't, you know, I didn't know that there was this, this side of the staff. I didn't know these are kind of in a positive way. And now they feel like they get to know you a little bit. And I think it's really helped with what we talked about with people getting to understand uh, who you guys are as people and as, and as coaches. Um, and it's just been personally really appreciated that you've done this, done this for us. And then they have one more chance, well, more chances, but one more great chance to come watch you guys, you know, in Kansas City the next two, three, four days. Um, and I imagine it'd be it'd meaning, meaningful for you guys and your players to see a good group there in Kansas City, I'd have to think. I mean, we know 11.30 is early on a, yep. on a regular day, but, you know, we, if we can take care of business and get to that Friday and we know who we'll be playing, right. you know, that needs, to, that needs to be rocking and rolling. Yep. You know, it needs to be... Um, a purple purple out there because you know this time of year is fun and this is what you should as a fan you want these matchups even way before the NCAA tournament the matchups you can see uh, in your region are, are really important yeah. Well, thank you, Coach. I really do appreciate it. Thanks to Flanders. You guys can't see him. I wish you could, but he's done more work on this. It's been it's been Chris one, Grant two, me three. So thank you very much for you for you doing that and. Um, who knows? Maybe maybe there's a time we can find down the road to do this solo season. I'm going to follow you guys wherever you go for the next you know next month or so. But if not, just thanks again. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah.